Hold On To The Nights was my first number one pop single. And it was the fourth and last single from this album, from the first album. And I wrote Hold On To The Nights in the middle of making the first album. So it wasn't a song that, that pre-existed. And um, I felt like um, I really only had um, one real ballad on the record, which was the last song, which we'll get to later, called Heaven Only Knows. And I felt like I needed a, a, another ballad for this first album. Um, and I, I, I went in pr to produce Hold On To The Nights with uh, my engineer, David Cole. And we deliberately produced it in such a way... I, I was listening to Peter Gabriel nonstop. I was listening to the So album by Peter Gabriel nonstop at the time. Because I made this record in 1986 and it came out in 87. And so 1986 was the year of Peter Gabriel's So. So Sledgehammer and Don't Give Up and Red Rain and all those amazing tracks from the So album. And when I would listen to Peter Gabriel's record, I was so blown away by the, the space and the atmosphere in those records that he made. And that's what I wanted to do with Hold On To The Nights. I didn't want it to be sort of a standard pop ballad. And I got a lot of flack from the record company and from radio and um, because the drums didn't come in until the very end of the song. I mean, there's just a lot of atmosphere and um, space in, in, that, in the production of Hold On To The Nights. It's really just sort of about the, the, the lyric and my vocal and my piano a little bit. And even that's, you know, it's, not, it's, not, it's almost produced in a way that it shouldn't have been hit. Because it didn't sound like anything else on the radio. Um, but again, I think it was uh, that people related to that lyric. And, and, and there was just something magical about it that I didn't know at the time. Um, I built the track up. I played uh, the keyboards on it. And um, Mike Landau's guitar playing with all this little spacey atmosphere guitar. And his solo was amazing. And, and I was lucky enough to get Patrick O'Hearn, the bass player from Missing Persons, to come in and play the fretless bass. Um, again, not somebody that I knew, but I knew a guy who knew him, and he was kind enough to come in and help out this young kid making his first record, being me. And um, I had worked a little bit with a drummer named Triss and Bowden. And Triss, I was a big fan of because he had played with Kenny Loggins on the road and played on a lot of Kenny's albums. So he played drums on This Is It and Keep the Fire and. Um, all the High Adventure album, which I really loved, and it was a big, big album in my life. And I'd become friendly with Tris, so um, I asked him to come and play drums. And all I told him was, okay, when you come in, when the drums come in at the end, all I know is I want it to be a really dramatic fill, kind of like In the Air Tonight. You know, when Phil Collins' drums come into In the Air Tonight, everybody knows about it. Everybody goes crazy because it's so exciting. And I kind of wanted that kind of vibe. So uh, I think it was really the first take, and Tris played that. Doom, doom, duck, 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 all those triplets. It was just so incredible. We, we were all screaming in the studio. Um, so uh, we, knew, we knew right then and there that, that we'd made the record that we wanted to make. I absolutely did not think that this was a hit record. Um, I thought it was the opposite of a hit record. Um, but like so many other times, I was wrong. Luckily for me. And Hold On To The Nights became my first number one single. Very exciting.